So now we're gonna do an interior walkthrough on this Creekside 20FQ Titanium Series. I'm just gonna kind of start um, on one end of the door here and go around in a circle so I don't uh, pass anything. So let's start with the monitor panel. So pretty self-explanatory here with the monitor panel. The first switch is the water pump. Um, you just turn that on, it'll light up. The water pump's on demand, so it'll just pump when you open up the faucets and stop when you close them. Um, the pump is what's drawing it out of the tank up to the faucets when you're, say, camping in the mountains. You don't need the pump, obviously, if you're hooked up to city water outside with the water hose. The pressure's just coming in through that hose. Um, now, here's how you have hot water. Here's the water heater on gas, water heater on electric. So say you go to an RV park and you get there and you plug in, you might as well just turn on electric and use that electricity to heat the water. It's going to be a little bit slower, but you just leave it on that whole time and, and it'll, it'll heat up and just maintain the whole time you're at the RV park there. Now, if you're up in the mountains, you can turn on the gas. So we'll flip that on. And if it fails to light the direct spark ignition fault light, this will be a little red dot right here between these two switches, that will be lit up if, if it does not light on gas. So it's just letting you know it didn't go and it's waiting for you to, to try something and, and check it out. Um, so, and the gas is gonna heat up a lot faster. So if you need to shower quickly, you know, turn that gas water heater on and, and it'll get there a lot quicker. Uh, monitor panel, you can poke these buttons. It'll tell you um, the condition of everything, like the batteries, they're lighting up full. Uh, fresh water tank we have empty and black and gray are also empty. So as you're using the vehicle, obviously your fresh water is going to be going down. So uh, holding tanks will be going up. It'll let you know how you're doing with your water levels. The first switch on the right here is the porch light outside. The next one is your uh, a few of your interior lights. Um, awning is electric, so just extend and retract. So there's the switch for that. Um, this vehicle has a 10 watt solar panel uh, factory installed on the roof. Um, now this one does not have a charge regulator, so it's just on an on-off switch. So in other words, it doesn't know when to quit charging if the batteries are full, say from pl being plugged into shore power. So, so this one, basically the easiest way to think of it is you can have it on anytime you're not plugged in. So it'll just trickle and help. Obviously we like to go with larger panels if you really want it to keep up with your usage on, on running appliances and all the things while camping. But that's a great one for, you know, if you have to store it, um, you know, or just to help put the lights back in and things like that. So again, does not have a charge regulator. That's why you just turn it off whenever you're plugged in so no overcharging would occur when you're plugged into power. The stereo's up here. Um, I won't turn it on just for noise, but you know, power button right here. Um, you have zones one and two. One is inside, two is outside, and of course you can play them both at the same time. Um, but basically this thing does everything. It does regular DVDs, just not Blu-ray. Um, it does Bluetooth off your phone, um, CDs, all that stuff. So so pretty much does everything. You can put the movie in, it'll go right over to the TV. And we're going to do a whole separate video on, on TV and, and DVD and stuff like that. So we'll just keep working our way around in a circle here. <clears throat> Microwave, just like any household microwave, it's electric, so you have to be, you know, plugged into power for that. Um, you have a light and a fan for cooking here. It has a knife rack uh, back here behind the glass top. With these glass tops, when you when you fold them back and use them, just remember to put them down before you hit the road. You know, you don't want that glass top coming down. Um, three burner stove top. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you have an automatic sparker that will light these top three. So let's do this back uh, left one. Clicked it once, it went right away, but you just keep on clicking to light these individually. So left, center, right. Now the oven is the only thing that you have to light with a lighter. Um, so you would turn this oven to pilot and push it in and depress it all the way on pilot. And it's gonna be hard, we won't have to get under with the camera, but underneath the middle of the shelf back there, there's a little two-pronged pilot assembly that you're gonna hold your flame or right on the tip of that. That'll get the pilot lit while you're holding that down. Let that pilot heat up a little bit and then say turn it up to 350 and you'll see the whole burner come on and, and the oven is going. <clears throat> Always good to kind of walk by and check these. Make sure you didn't bump one with your hip and, you know, turn them on as you're walking by. So always good to kind of keep an eye on those. And they also has a uh, propane alarm right down here on the floor. Smoke alarm back here up on the ceiling. That one's 9 volt battery operated. Propane is hardwired into the system. And then there's also a carbon monoxide alarm uh, in the bedroom, also on a 9-volt battery. Um, let's see, coming around in this vehicle, this one has a uh, <clears throat> remote control operated max fan in the ceiling. Um, pretty self-explanatory um, with the power button. The fan blades are uh, increase and decrease the speed. Um, this one also has temperature, so you can uh, set it for a certain temperature to come on automatically um, you know, in that, in that mode. Um, so pretty straightforward. We won't run it just for sound on the video there. <clears throat> this one's all pre-wired for larger roof panel. 
It's all pre-wired in here for the charge regulator and everything. So very simple if you ever want to go with a larger panel. Um, this vehicle is also equipped with a bedroom TV in the Titanium series. Um, it is a 12 volt TV, just like the main living room TV. Um, so you can watch it on battery power. There's a DVD player right in the right hand side of this one. So you can have two different movies going on two different TVs in this vehicle. <clears throat> the thermostat here, hopefully we can get the camera over here to see the face of the thermostat. Telling us room temperature right now. It's in the off position, but we're 71 degrees. The rectangle here will turn us on there. Uh, hit it again, and you just keep hitting the button to cycle through the modes. It just goes in a big circle. So the fan on low and high is the air conditioner fan only. On cool, high and low is air conditioning. On auto cool, that is all that does is shut the fan off when you get to temperature. So whenever it gets to temperature, the fan and everything will shut down as it needs to. The air conditioner fan and everything will come on. If you're just on cool high, for instance, the fan will not shut off. So if you like to sleep with kind of that white noise going on, drowns out that outside noise, um, you can be on cool, high, or low, and that fan will not shut off. Auto will shut it off. Um, I cycled through it really quickly, but the bottom one was furnace. You just go to, it says heat, and that's, that's your furnace. Um, you can just hit up or down to change temperature. So we can set this thing down on a good mild temperature. The furnace is gonna, um, you know, uh, the fan will come on first. It'll ignite on propane and start heating the trailer. So the fan runs on, uh, the blower fan runs on electric uh, power, whether you're plugged in or DC battery operated when you're off grid. Um, but it always burns propane for the fuel. The whole trailer is based around the furnace to keep from freezing. So in any sort of freezing weather, you have to keep the trailer above 32 with that furnace uh, and, and it will keep you from freezing. It'll keep that heat in the basement, keep it, you know, blown around circulating everywhere. <clears throat> In the bathroom, uh, we have the GFCI outlet here, the ground fault. So in this particular trailer, this is the only one in here that, that runs, you know, the other ones, the kitchen and exterior and stuff like that. So this is the one to reset if you're plugged into electricity and the outlets are dead and this is popped, just reset it right there. Also has a wall switch for this ceiling fan. Um, you can turn the fan on. Um, it'll open, the lid will open and everything. Just keep hitting that button to cycle through the various speeds. Um, you know, so pretty uh, self-explanatory there. The uh, toilet in this model is also, it's porcelain. You can clean it with regular household cleaners. Um, <clears throat> to get started, we like to flush a couple gallons of water down the toilet with some RV chemical. That way you have some water and some chemical on the bottom of the tank uh, that's ready to, to go. Um, it's also nice to just gently depress the pedal and add a little bit of water to the bowl so you can then use it and then push it all the way down to flush it. So just depress the pedal a little bit, add a little bit of water, use it, push the pedal down to flush, but you've got that chemical down there working to break everything down and to deodorize. Um, I think that's everything in the bathroom. So coming around this way, we have the uh, fuses and breakers. So pop the top there, this comes down. All your electric breakers, they're all labeled, all your 12 volt fuses. So the 12 volt fuses are like water pump, furnace, lights, stuff like that. Breakers are air conditioning, microwave, all your 110 stuff. So everything's right there, easy to find. It's always good to carry a spare, a spare pack of fuses just in case. The refrigerator, 99% uh, of the time, it's easiest to run the refrigerator on automatic. Automatic is always going to take electricity first and then take gas as a backup. So right now we're plugged in, microwaves lit up, telling us we're plugged in. So it is on electric and it's going there. Um, if we were to lose power or whatever, it's going to automatically switch to gas and just continue to cool. As soon as power is restored, right back to power. So auto is just great. You don't have to worry about it. Um, now you can physically go over here to just gas by sliding this dial over here to just gas. And a lot of people use that that are camping with generators. So they're off grid, they might start their generator from time to time. And what that does is prevent the uh, fridge from going to electric and stealing power from your generator when you'd rather have that generator power go to something else like the microwave or the air conditioner. So you can isolate it and it's not going to take that power. But auto is sure easy. Don't have to worry about it. It kind of maintains it for you. Temperature is always nice to be kind of right there in the middle. Like on this one, it's one to five. We're going to be set on three. Um, always stay level when you're running the refrigerator. Now, normal travel down the road is not a big deal. Um, but whenever you're parked and this is running, you want to stay level. So that coolant uh, through those coils that go horizontally, they can flow. If you pull all that coolant up at one side, it's not going to, not going to work properly and it could hurt it. So stay level, coolant's going to flow great and, and so um, and work just properly. I also add in these walkthroughs, this little lever right here, um, it's not a travel lock. I mean, when you hear that door click, it's locked. 
these things, we can push them slightly open there and it'll lock these doors open so that they can breathe in the off season. So if it's off, it's shut down, you want it to breathe all off season, they can do that and it won't be, uh, you know, kind of musty in the spring when you open it up for the first time. So those are not travel locks just to hold them open. And I think that is the interior of uh, this vehicle.